Jason actually does a lot of work in the stem. And the company you work with is called Vex. Is that correct? Correct. Vex Robotics. So that's, correct. that's what he does. But you've also, and I love this about you and I appreciate it, is that you also said you've been an educator for 20 plus years as well. So you yeah. bring those fields. In, and I love, I'm finding that we're, I'm connecting with more and more people that are business, businesses are tapping into that have education backgrounds. And it shows like all the stuff that you can teach because a lot of these businesses are realizing how important it is to be adaptable, to be able to really kind of learn on the fly. And so I appreciate that. So from your experience as an educator, you look back and you mentioned about the collaboration thing. So you've had some ups and downs of a career like all of us have had. You look back at, and you think about the teachers that you've worked with or who taught you, who's someone in, who has inspired you and why? Yeah, so I'll take this a slightly different approach. And I tell this story in the introduction to my book. I was a first year teacher and the woman across the hall from me, we'll just say her name is Michelle. She was one of these teachers, the last three months of the year, she shut her classroom down. Didn't do what anything you would refer to as traditional teaching and basically had her kids perform skits and plays and do things like that. And as a first year teacher, I remember looking down on her and thinking I would never do that. We had a new principal that year when I got hired and he was, he would talk about how basically I never want to see you do that when you're teaching, stick with what you're doing. She retired that year. Fast forward a year later, a bunch of friends and myself, we decide we're all going to run a leg of the Pittsburgh. So we're all in a warm up area. We're all wearing Hope Ball t-shirts because we were fundraising and had a gentleman come up to me, saw the Hope Ball on my shirt and said, Hey, you graduate from Hope Ball. I teach there. He says, I graduated from Hopewell and proceeds to tell me how he's an orthopedic surgeon, very successful, says to me, hey, when I was in fifth grade, I was a troubled kid. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was head down the base of the path wrong. And this one teacher turned my life around. Everything that I have right now, I owe to her. And it was that teacher that I looked down upon my first year of teaching. I never forgot that story. I've told that story numerous times because again, nothing works everywhere. Something's going to work somewhere. And I think having that humility and understanding that each classroom has its own context, each student has its own context that they bring in and trying to think about that from the perspective of teaching and learning, I think it is very important. And and just to connect it back to the book again, one of the things that I try to do with the book is just basically talk about, you have all these different camps in education. You have people saying that the teaching of knowledge is very important and things like direct instruction are important. Then you have people saying that the discovery-based learning is important and we shouldn't be doing direct things like direct instruction. We should be allowing the kids to learn these things on their own. And basically what I try to say is I try to say, listen, there's all these different competing things out here. Here's what's worked for me. Here's what I think is effective but I want to give you the means to find out what's going to work for you and your students. I love that. That's such a great story too. And it, like, I actually wrote this down that sometimes what is valued in education is not often, is not always what's valuable in education. Yeah. And really thinking about that too. Right. And well, saying you, you should be doing this, but what did you, you remember? How does it affect them as they move forward? I love that. And you talked about business and this is something I believe this is why oftentimes teachers are very effective when they go into the business world. And then conversely, this is why you're seeing so many things around teachers burn. You think about why people get involved in education. They love children. They love seeing the light bulb go off. They get, they love the subject that they're teaching, but what as teachers, what they're assessed upon, none of those conversations normally ever happen. You don't have a conversation about what really can lit the fire for your students there. Or what really did this or that? Whereas in business, it's the exact opposite. We're so worried about retaining good talent that we oftentimes want to have those conversations with the people that work with us and say things like, hey, what are you enjoying the work? What do you want to do to continue to challenge yourself? What are the things that really make sure that you enjoy coming to work every single day? But sadly, mm -hmm. those are conversations that teachers rarely have.